as we remember the youth who fought the struggles, let us celebrate the youth who will lead the future. And I think it's important to include youth in these discussions and these thought uh, leadership programs to ensure that we have their views as well. Um, as part of an introduction uh, of the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association, we are a non-for-profit industry association, and we aim to promote, develop, and grow <clears throat> sorry, the photovoltaic sector and the wider renewable energy industry here in South Africa. Our aim is to facilitate and create a viable solar PV market, and we do this by becoming the trusted partner to government, uh, as well as promoting the members' products and services. Our vision, our mission, and our values have not changed over the years. We still strive to have solar PV as the electricity generation technology of choice here in South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, and we do this by values of cohesion, consistency, and collaboration. In terms of our membership, you can see steady growth year on year in terms of the membership. We started in 2010 with just six members who at that time wanted to influence the IRP to have renewable energy included in the mix. And we've now grown to over 300 members across the value chain of solar PV. Uh, our members uh, collectively uh, have interests in project development, uh, project ownership, uh, EPCs, ONMs, manufacturing, small-scale embedded generation, installation companies, training centers, research and uh, consulting services, as well as the finance sector. NetBank is a member of SAPVIA. Uh, in terms of the presentation today, thank you, Chris, for inviting me. And I've been asked to talk about the needs for, the needs for standards. And I'm going to talk about solar PV standards specifically, as I know standards would vary depending on the technology of embedded generation that you're talking about. So I'm going to talk about the solar PV standardizations and certifications, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit more detail. In terms of the need for, stand for safety standards and procedures, I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this in just one slide, and I, I hope it's going to make the point. Uh, I'm also going to talk about the need for a solar PV quality assurance mechanism, and here I'm going to talk about the PV Green Card program specifically, an industry-led initiative which talks about skills development, accreditation of installers, standardization of installation practices, as well as the standardization of documentation. And then I'll give you a quick, so through the presentation, you'll get a, a quick status as to where the standards are. So in terms of standardization, I thought it was important for me to put up the definition of what standardization is. So this is the, pro uh, the process of implementing and developing technical standards. And this is the easy part. Based on the consensus of different parties and stakeholders, and this is where we tend to have a lot of trouble. Uh, we have had solar PV standards in process over the last seven years. And we've not been able to get consensus with all of the parties and stakeholders. I'm hoping that this time around we'll get it right. Uh, so in, in our opinion, the areas which require standardization and which we've intervened in as the association is training content. We've received a number of training platforms or so institutions who are, who are conducting training on, a, on various uh, platforms. And there's no standardization of what this content entails. So we thought we needed to uh, standardize the content. And we did this by, an, by providing a national curriculum for solar PV technicians. It took six years to develop this, this, this curriculum. And it is finally accepted uh, and registered with SACWA uh, and, and is now, um, and is now um, you're now able to get it through TVET colleges. Installation techniques, also another area which needs standardization. And this, as I've said, was a seven-year process to get the SANS 101-42-1-2 technical standard of uh, small-scale embedded generation wiring in place. We have finally got a final um, draft of this standard. However, we still need consensus. So this will still come out for public consultation through the standard of bureaus uh, here in South Africa. And the last one we thought that required standardization is documentation. It was important to document installations across the country um, in terms of which components were used, where the installations were happening, and declarations to ensure that standards were being uh, implemented with these installations. And this is where the PV Green Card mechanism plays a big role. In terms of certification, we do understand the need for components uh, to be certified, they are 
uh, three categories that I've highlighted which require certification, the modules that you're using, the inverters that you're using, and of course the balance of plant as well. There are international best practices and international testing and certifications available through the IEC standards and the likes. You have centers that are developed specifically uh, to certify these, uh, these components. Uh, the problem with this is that we do not have it here in South Africa, so it becomes costly to have the certification done for these components. And I think we are looking at the CSIR with the development of a new testing session to see how we can get there. Uh, the other problem with the certification is that some believe that the IEC uh, testing or certification is not sufficient for a 20-year PPA uh, that, is, uh, that this equipment will be going through. So in terms of the installations, uh, I'm happy for once our numbers align. So we do align in terms of quantifying uh, the SSEG market with the CSIR. We do estimate almost four or more than 400 megawatts of installed capacity and a rough uh, estimation of almost 60,000 installations across South Africa already in place. And we expect this to grow year and year going forward. And this is why quality and safety of installations then become important. So in my presentation, I'm going to declare that we're going to focus more on the under one megawatt category of SSEG. I believe within the one to 10 category, there is sufficient space within uh, the development of the project to ensure quality on these projects and IPPs have set standards when they're doing these installations. So when we talk about the need for safety standards and procedures, I'm gonna leave this slide up for just a, a couple of seconds and let it sink in. <laughs> These are actual installations that we see happening in South Africa. And when we went into a deep dive into why these installations are happening, two key things stood up. One, there's a lack of skills development uh, in the country, and two, there's a lack of standards in the country as to how you do this. And we also went to see who was doing the installations. And you would see someone who was able to do a solar water heater installation is now doing solar PV installations. Someone who did a DSTV installation thinks they can do solar PV installations. And you end up with these kinds of installations. So we thought as industry, we're not gonna stand by and allow this to happen. Uh, it's going to taint the entire reputation of solar PV and what it stands for and all of the benefits that come with it. So we created a program called the PV Green Card. We partnered on this program with Green Cape and the Western Cape government, with Saratech, the National Center for Renewable Energy Technology uh, training, uh, DGS Berlin, uh, the international organization, and the GIZ through the uh, SAGEN program with the Department of Energy. And we based this program on four key pillars, one being skills development, which was really required, Two being accreditation, so you could know which of the installation companies actually knew what they were doing. Three, the standardization of uh, processes, which then spoke about how you should do an installation, and four, the documentation of your installation. So if we look at the skills development, I spoke about the national curriculum that is in place and is re uh, registered with SACWA and available. This qualification was built on a career pathing uh, methodology where you could start as a school leaver, you could do seven months of training and become a mounter, so that is just the mechanical mounting. The second part is then the installation and the wiring of the system. The third part then talks about a plant technician and brings in design aspects, and the fourth part is then a full service technician which allows you to then do uh, operation and maintenance thereafter. We focused on the second one, uh, that one, when we saw the move into small-scale embedded generation about three years ago, four years ago, we thought we need to focus on uh, the installation of standalone uh, rooftop projects, as it was then called, uh, to ensure that we had a skills base that was able to deliver these projects. From this part qualification, we created two aspects to the program. The first one was a two-day assessment. The assessment was for us as the industry association to vet installers to see whether they could do the installation. The two-day assessment, the first day is a full theoretical assessment. The second day is an actual practical assessment where we expect you to get on a roof and do an installation so we know that you're doing it correctly. The second component that we developed was the PV installer course. This is a five-day training course. So when we looked at the 
the situation or the status quo at the time, we thought we could not hold this industry for two years until people were trained through this curriculum and recognized. So then we looked at the curriculum and we thought, if we break this curriculum down, 80% of the curriculum is an electrician's curriculum. The additional 20% is specific to the, to the PV installation. So we thought if we took electricians through a five-day course on the 20% of the PV, we would have suitably qualified uh, people to do these installations. And that's how we set up the program um, and the skills development component of it. So for us, if you are able to pass the assessment, even without the training, because we know there are people who do these installations day on day, we will still recognize you and recommend you through the program. If you are unable to pass the assessment, we ask you to do the five-day training. If you're an electrician, come back, do the assessment, and then, and then be on your way. In terms of accreditation, we looked at two, sp uh, two simple uh, criteria for accrediting you within the program. One is that you would have had to do the skills development part and do the assessment so we knew you, that you knew what you were doing. And legally, we thought you had to be registered with the Department of Labor as a registered person to sign off on these uh, installations as they fall part of the electrical uh, installations and the regulations that, that govern it. I have put a clause in here. There has been uh, a, a legal opinion done by Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer giving the sign of powers and, and telling you exactly what the government or what uh, legislation requires in terms of signing off these installations. And that's why we went with the Department of Labor registered persons. So all you need to do is be registered with the Department of Labor, pass the assessment, and then as an industry association, we put our names behind you to say that you are able to do this, uh, these installations. We don't just leave you. We give you guidelines as to how to do the installation as well. So I have to declare, big and bold, it is recommended as an interim measure until the national standards have been finalized. We've put together a set of guidelines and as to how to do the installations. These are readily available to the public on our website. Uh, this is the www.pbgreencard.co.za website. You can have a look at it. It, is, it does include what's included in the national uh, qualification of the curriculum. It's included as what is included in international best practice. And we also included all of the uh, policies, the acts, the regulations, the guidelines that we could find in South Africa that were applicable to SSEG uh, projects and installations. A quick guideline on it is the house. So we showed you the, the installation on the house and we have aligned it to the national standards or international standards that we could find to make it quick and easy for someone who knew what they were doing but just wanted to check up. The last part of the program is the documentation. We found it increasingly uh, difficult to quantify the market because no one was documenting these installations. They were ad hoc, they were all over the place. They were not registered with NASA, they were not registered with the municipalities. No one had a database of where these installations were. And we thought, let's put in an aspect where you could actually document your entire installation and use it for more than just a database, right? So here we ask you to put in details of where your system is, what components were used in the system, what are the warranties associated with those components, and, what, and a declaration as to which standards you've used to actually do the installation. And this is a document that we expect you to fill out and hand over to the end consumer who is then responsible for this installation that you've done in their home. And a big part of this is also consumer education in terms of if you go to a consumer's home and you do an installation and you put up two panels, that consumer still thinks they're not gonna have an ESCOM bill. We get calls day on day saying, we had an installation done, two solar PV panels. They told us we'll be off the grid, I still have an ESCOM bill. It's just impossible. So we thought let's also educate the, the consumer because they are responsible for this at the end of the day. And this is actually your PV green card, which is then handed over to your, to your customer. In terms of some of the achievements out of the program, to date, we have trained 24 training institutions to offer the training under the skills development portion of the program. We have 130 registered companies that were not SAPIA members previously, who are all small-scale embedded generator uh, installation companies. We have almost 250 installers 
being assessed under the program, we have over 700 candidates being trained uh, through the last 18 months of the program being in, in existence. We've also been recognized uh, by the Department of Energy, uh, by the Department of Labor, the Department of Environmental Affairs, SALGA, AMU, uh, municipalities are now calling for the PV Green Card as the quality mechanism of choice. Financiers and banks are also using it as a mechanism of vetting installers that are doing the installations that they are financing. So my last slide, Chris, uh, in terms of the benefits of PV Green Card. So quickly, of course, the skills development is there to create a qualified workforce. Uh, a list of suitably qualified installers who are recommended by the industry association gives some level of comfort. Customers are comforted by the installers who are trained and could provide a quality uh, installation. Um, it provides the banks and insurance company, uh, companies levels of comfort to finance and insure uh, these installations. It ensures that these installations comply and conform with safety policies, regulations, and guidelines that are applicable in South Africa. We've not created new ones, I guarantee you. We've just taken what was there. Uh, and standardization of documentation so we could get industry norms.